Good morning and welcome to our online worship for Broadway and Port Colden United Methodist Churches. My name is Pastor Catherine and I'm so glad to have you join us from wherever you are joining us from this day. I invite you now as we enter into our time together, entering into the fourth Sunday of Advent, to hear our centering words this day. Dreams and angels, prophecies, mystery and magi, choirs and shepherds, we make our way to the star-blessed stable, to the light shining miraculously in human misery and darkness. We are almost there. Beloved, as ones continuing on our Advent journey, I invite you now to sing with me our opening song, O Sing a Song of Bethlehem. Will you join with me as we say our opening prayer together? Holy One, we give you thanks that you are with us in all situations and places, helping us witness hope, providing us peace, offering us joy. Inspire us this day and every day to show others love through our words and actions. May we choose love always. Amen. Each week as we have gathered together in this virtual platform, we have lit our virtual Advent wreath. So I invite you now as we begin this time to center yourselves a little more fully. The gifts of hope, peace, and joy have helped to sustain us on this Advent journey this year. They have reminded us of the one who walks with us and goes before us. 
This day, we light the candle of love as a reminder to choose love as we go through each day in all situations of our lives. So we invite the God of love, the one who created all things in love, who breathed love and life into each of us, and whose son gave up his life in love for us. We invite this one to help us to see the image of God in everyone to meet, we meet, to show love to the loveless, to bring God's love to a broken world through the ways that we live. So as people who are seeking out how to live more fully as carriers of God's love in the world, I invite us to sing our song of response. Our scripture is Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 through 24. This is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. The word of God for the people of God. My freshman year of college, uh, I went on a retreat with our Christian organization. And one of the free time activities was high rope, a high ropes course into uh, a zip line. Now, if you know anything about me, I'm not a fan of heights. Like, I can do it, 
but it is not my preferred choice. Although I do love roller coasters. It's a weird thing. But a friend of mine who I was there with said, you know, you don't have to do this, but I'm going to do it. I'll be there right with you every step of the way. The harnesses are safe. She walked me through all the things. And I felt so encouraged and emboldened by um, her support and her um, care for me. And so I strapped into the rig and we climbed up the ladder and we started doing this high ropes course. Now there's a picture that uh, she had that is me like midway through this ropes course, like very focused, holding onto the top rope, holding onto the, you know, standing on, on the bottom rope. And the picture just looks like I'm super focused on, on getting my task done. But I know that really I am trying to encourage my feet to, to take one more step forward. Just take one more step. And eventually one more step got us closer and closer to the end and zip lining down back to the safety of the ground. See, in that moment, I had a choice to make, whether to take this opportunity to be a part of this cool new adventure or to stay within my safety. And now it wasn't until after we came off the ground that my friend admitted that she had never done a high ropes course that high uh, and that she was just as scared as I was. But you would never have known that from her words to encourage me to get up there. But we find that in each situation in our own lives, we are invited to make a choice, to choose to do something um, in a new way or to choose to stay where it's safe and comfortable. The season of Advent, while it is a season of preparation and waiting, it is also a season that invites us to be willing to take risks, to experience the unexpected, to encounter the unpredictable, to not or to release control or our desire to control all aspects of our lives. And the goal, as we hear and explore these words of hope and peace and joy and love, the goal is that at the end, we are willing to live differently as we enter into the Christmas season, to uh, see the world differently, see one another differently, to live more boldly in the world and live in new ways and do new things. And so consider, consider for yourself, what is a time where you had to make a decision, where you struggled to make the right decision in a moment or situation? Maybe it was a job or moving or some sort of hope or dream or vision for yourself or a family member or or a friend but think about that moment and think about what it felt like to take that leap of faith to enter into the work of taking a holy risk we find in our scripture today Joseph taking this lame leap for his own context, obviously. We find that um, if we match it with other gospel stories, Mary has been visited by an angel and told that she's going to have a baby. She goes to visit her cousin Elizabeth for uh, three months or so. And so when she returns to their hometown of Nazareth, it is clear that she is pregnant. It is also known that she is not married and she is supposed to be marrying Joseph. And so Joseph is a very practical man and weighs his pros and cons. And he knows in the generous part of his spirit, he doesn't want to get Mary in trouble or to make things harder on her. So he's considering, you know, behind the scenes, severing ties with her so she can live her life. 
And so after he goes through all of these scenarios and he thinks he's figured it out in his sleep, an angel of the Lord visits him and tells him to take this leap, to not be afraid that this really is a work of God and that this child that will be born will save people, will save the world. And then the scripture in Matthew, the author in Matthew, adds on that this took place to fulfill the prophecy of old that a virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and they will call him Emmanuel. And so we know that in the last verse, Joseph woke. And he did what the angel said. He took Mary as his wife and they started a life together. He took a leap of faith. And what we find is that this um, choice that Joseph makes is really what we are asked, being asked to consider when we hear the word love, when we are uh, introduced to this concept during this season of Advent. The love or love that we are being offered, the invited to consider, is to make choices rooted in love. Love for one another, love for the possibility, love for what could be in the future, to not be self-centered and self-focused, but to look at the bigger picture right? We find that we have this balance between knowing how loved we are and finding the courage to make decisions in love in the world, right? We find throughout scripture that God has cared for his people time and time again, that each of us is called beloved, a child of God, that we are cared for in the deepest of ways, although we don't always recognize it or realize it. But we encounter also within this season and beyond it that we are being asked that if we are loved, we need to show love as well that we need to consider what it looks like to move in the world guided by love. And so we find that choosing love, choosing to act and speak and move and, and interact with others in love is a holy risk. Now, when we hear this, this phrasing, right, a holy risk means that while we know the action might be right, the outcome may be right, we have fear about how we are to approach the situation, how we are supposed to be involved, the ways that we are supposed to um, respond to fulfill our, our call to love. And so we are invited in this season to consider all the three other things with this idea of love, to consider the things of hope and peace and joy as we consider what it means to move in love. Simply put, the season of Advent invites us to um, identify places of oppression and injustice within our community in our corner of the world and to start taking strides to remedy those things to work towards justice and equity to work towards fairness and equality and so we find that what this season is inviting us to to do as a community is to take holy risks together to take leaps of faith, to enter into new mission and ministry, to, to take a chance, to try new things, to attempt uh, things that are stirring in our heart. And even within this odd space of pandemic ministry, 
how can we bring the gospel in new ways to those in our community and beyond it? How can we be the church beyond the four walls of our building? And so we are being asked to consider and to ask ourselves, do we truly accept God's love for us? That God would do anything for us? And secondly, are we willing to share that love? Are we willing to do anything to make sure that others know that there is love for them? Are we willing to take holy risks? I wonder, as I think about this idea, how different the story would have been if even after the angel visited, Joseph said, no, I'm good. How different the story would be. Yet, as I think about his choice to marry Mary to enter into a life with her and to raise this child. I think in that moment, Joseph also committed to trying to love that child as best as he could. And so I think of awesome friends who have become bonus parents and are co-parenting with their former partners. I think about the ways that love is continually redefined in my life of how expansive love is. And I continue to find that every time I think I've gotten a handle on understanding love in the world, something happens where my understanding and mentality is completely shaken in the best way possible. And I am reminded how expansive and expressive and transformational love truly is. But at its root, love asks us to take risks into the unknown, to take leaps of faith, not to not be fearful, but to move forward in spite of our fear. So I invite you today to consider how do you choose love, to act in love and speak in love in the world? In what ways can our community better move in love in our corner of the world? What holy risks is God inviting us to take as we enter into, as we prepare to enter into the Christmas season? If nothing else, this invitation of love is a reminder for us that God is always with us. And that God has given us the gift of love so long ago and offers us the gift every day since. And it becomes our task to choose to accept this gift of love and to share it, to own and remind ourselves that we are loved and worthy of love in this world, to be willing to take leaps of faith. So, will you accept God's love? Will you accept God's call to love? Will you share love? Will you take a holy risk this day? May we leap forward together. 
Amen. May God bless us with discomfort at easy answers, half-truths, and superficial relationships so that we may live from deep within our hearts. May God bless us with anger at injustice, oppression, and exploitation of God's creations so that we may work for justice, freedom, and peace. May God bless us with tears to shed for those who suffer pain, rejection, hunger, and war so that we may reach out our hands to comfort them and to turn their pain into joy. 
And may God bless us with just enough foolishness to believe that we can make a difference in the world so that we can do what others claim cannot be done. To bring justice and kindness to all our children and all our neighbors who are poor. Amen. Knowing that God hears the prayers that we have said and the prayers that we have said in our hearts, we give all these things to God this morning. And so we say together the prayer that we were taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We have been given the gifts of hope and peace and joy and love this Advent season, this season of preparation and anticipation and waiting. And so we have these gifts as we move even closer to Christmas Day. And so as we continue to move through the days of this week, I invite you Again, to consider what are the holy risks God has been stirring in your heart for you and for our community to take? What are the ways forward we are being ushered to go in this season we are preparing to enter into, in the new year we are preparing to enter into? How can we more fully act and live and be love in this corner of the world. May we dream, may we vision, may we hear the words of prophecy of old and the words of prophets among us. May we fight for justice, may we fight for equity, may we fight for love. May the God of love 
inspire us once more this day and all days. So go in peace and hope and joy and love into the world, bearers of God's light. And may God go with you in all that you do. Amen. 